Amen. Well, this second quarter, we are going to be doing a CU, and it's going to be a little bit different than the, than the ones that we have done before, and that we're going to just go through the book of Mark, and um, um, we're, we're actually just going to pull a few stories out because it's hard to do an exhaustive study in an in a eight-week, eight to nine-week time frame with just 20 minutes, but I would encourage you to read through the book of Mark uh, during, this, during this time, um, and, and just let the Lord speak to you through this, through this amazing uh, gospel. Um, just, a, just a little bit in, in, by way of introduction, we will, we will speed through this today because I realize we're really far behind in time, but I do want to set this, this CEU study up for you uh, with a little bit of an introduction. So I'm going to read a couple verses from outside of Mark, the first in Psalms 27. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, and be glorious to me and answer me. When you said, Seek my face, my heart said to you, uh, Your face, O Lord, I shall seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have, you have been my help. Do not abandon me, nor forsake me, O my salvation. Uh, so here, here, the psalmist David is talking about seeking the face of God. Um, and we've seen that, you see that, that narrative throughout Scripture many times. Revelation 4, 7 says there, the first creature uh, was like that of a lion, the second creature like a calf, and the third creature had a face like that of a man, and the fourth creature was a flying eagle. Now this, this seems like a pretty bizarre, bizarre passage, but um, it's actually one that uses some imagery that theologians for centuries have actually equated with the, the face of God. Uh, in, in fact, even Augustine, he, he, um, he wrote about this extensively. Uh, and used these different animal descriptions as a way to, uh, for us to picture the face of God. So I would encourage you to read some of those writings, but it, it's, it's fascinating. Um, it's fascinating to see the way that theologians uh, have, have used this image of the face of God and these, these four faces of these different animals to show us the different, um, the different gospels, uh, how Jesus was betrayed in the different gospels. For instance, in Matthew, um, there, is, there is Jesus uh, being depicted like, like a lion uh, in power and royalty. Of course, Matthew's uh, writing was focused to the Jews, and so it was, it was his writing that sort of propped Jesus up as, as the king, right? And, and the Jews were wanting and expecting a king that would come in and, and reign and, and uh, sort of uh, free them from the tyranny of, of Roman rule. Uh, but Jesus was coming in to establish a different kind of kingdom. In fact, in, in Matthew 1.1, it starts the genealogy of Jesus, the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham, and then it goes through, of course, a long genealogy, but uh, it, it, it might catch you by surprise to see that, that he didn't sort of start in, in order. Of course, Abraham came, came well before David, right? But he started with David establishing uh, that, that Jesus is coming as, as king in the, in the lineage of David. And so in the Jews' mind, this would have been, this would have been amazing, right? Uh, because God said to David, I will establish uh, from you someone who will sit on the throne forever, right? And, and so uh, the Jews would have loved this kind of language in receiving uh, the Messiah as a king. And so in Matthew, you sort of have Jesus with this face of a lion, uh, in, in Luke, we're going to skip Mark and come back to it. In Luke, um, we find that Jesus is depicted uh, with this, if you use the, the imagery of Revelation, the face of a, of a man, right? Luke 19.10, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. Um, and then in John, uh, Jesus depicted with this face of an eagle or, or majesty, right? This excellence or majesty, different from royalty and kingship, 
more of this, this idea of majesty, of one who is exalted and high. Uh, John 20, 31, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, the Son of God, and believing that you may have life in His name. So He is elevated, right? He is, he is elevated with majesty and excellence. It's just not about royalty of kingship, but it's about the excellence of being the Son of God, the majesty of the, of the Son of God. I, I would encourage you to, to go and do some further study because it is fascinating when you, when you read, when you read uh, some of these early church fathers and theologians uh, on, on these kind of studies. But in Mark, uh, Jesus is depicted, according to Augustine, with this face of an ox, right, or a, a, a servant. An ox is, a, is an animal that, that is used uh, in, in farming in a service kind of way. And Mark, during this, during this uh, CEU, is the wonder of God that is on display uh, through, through him sending his son uh, to, this, to this earth to be a servant and to lay down his life uh, for, for those he came, came to serve. And I just think it's an amazing thing that God would send uh, the, his son to this earth and that he would take on the form of a servant. And of course, Philippians 2 tells us Right, that that our attitude should be the same as Christ Jesus, uh, who who didn't come to to serve, but but or didn't come to be served, but to serve. Right, he took on the form of a servant, and and we should do we should do likewise. So I hope in some way over the course of this study that you are encouraged, you are encouraged to just uh, uh, to be reminded that we are called to serve like Jesus. To live and to serve like Jesus. So, so Mark 2 is where we're going to start uh, with the calling of Levi or Matthew. Um, and, and it's a great story uh, that I think gives us a great reminder of this idea of Jesus as, as a servant. Once again, Jesus went outside beside the lake. And a large crowd came to him and, began to, and he began to teach them. As he walked along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, Jesus told him, and Levi got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were eating with him and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. And when the teachers of the law, who were Pharisees, saw him eating with sinners and tax collectors, they asked, uh, his disciples, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? But on hearing this, Jesus said to them, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have, come, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. We see that Jesus, all through his ministry, spent time with people that respectable religious leaders, if you will, would not go, go near. Um, Jesus, Jesus truly, drew, truly modeled uh, to us how to love everyone regardless of status or reputation. Um, because I, I don't think if we look back in, in Jesus' day and sort of compare it to now, this, this idea of tax collectors probably doesn't have an equal in our day and time. I mean, no one, no one is, a, is a huge fan even today of the tax collector, uh, right? Um, we always hate to pay that little extra to feed the man, right? But, but it's the disdain for a tax collector is nowhere near today what it would have been in, in Jesus' day. Um, they were absolutely hated, especially especially by the Jews and other people who had been occupied by the, by the Roman Empire uh, because these tax collectors were basically sanctioned by the, by the Romans to, to collect taxes for Rome, but they also were given a lot of leeway to do a lot of under-the-table stuff that would line their pockets and, and make them rich, right? Not unlike things that we see in... in uh, many places today and in, in, in many governments around the world where people who uh, work in certain positions, they are more than happy to take a little extra, 
right? Um, and, and tax collectors were like that. They had the liberty. They had a lot of liberty to not just get what was Rome's, but to get whatever else that they wanted through bribes and extortion. So how would Jesus treat someone like that that he knew the Jews looked down on uh, so very much? Uh, very, very simply, he, he loved them. Uh, he, he loved them. Even in spite of their deceitful lifestyle, uh, Jesus treated um, this outcast from, from, uh, in, in his community with, with love. And he calls them out of this destructive lifestyle. And, and Levi responds not with questions, but just by immediate obedience. It says, Jesus said, follow me. And Levi just got up and followed him. I wonder how many of us have that kind of obedience when God asks us to do something. How many times does God speak and we try to talk ourselves out of it? Uh, I don't know if that was really God or not. Uh, I, I don't know if God would say that. Here's what I found. If we feel that God is speaking to our hearts, if we will just in faith take a step like towards that, like if we're out, if we're out of, of bounds and we didn't hear right, that wasn't God speaking, if we'll take that step of faith, God will honor that step of faith by, by showing us that's not the right direction in some way by closing a door. But more likely, we will find a door that is open that, that we can walk through if we'll just take that step of faith. Levi did that that day, and I think it's pretty amazing how this sinner, an outcast, uh, follow Jesus immediately, and yet we'll find the Pharisees, um, the, who were the religious, pious people of the day, they, they, they couldn't go there. They couldn't do that. Um, so let me just give you a few points because we are running out of time. Uh, Jesus' love is unconditional. Jesus' love is, is unconditional. Um, we, we all know that. I, I know we do. But man, um, wow, how often we, we forget that. You know, I think, I think we can receive that word very well when it comes to others. Right? I mean, we, we counsel others, all of us do, and we've got a friend that's going through something. Oh, man, I know you blow it, but Jesus, you know, he's, he loves you. He's forgiven you. It's so easy to tell that stuff to others, right? But we're not really good at, at practicing that message for ourselves. Um, but I want you to know that Jesus loves you unconditionally. It doesn't matter what you've done, how far out of bounds you think you've gone. Jesus loves you. Um, and, and here's the great thing. Uh, we are loved by God no matter our history. Like no matter where we came from. Levi was the worst of the worst in, in, in society's view, right? But Jesus loved him, went into his house, fellowshiped with him, um, and, and, and even called him uh, to be one of his, to be one of his inner inner twelve, right, or his his inner circle. Um, I, I thought it was funny as I was as I was reading. You know, here you have this this tax collector, and then you've got Simon, who was a zealot, right? Which which were uh, those two would have been clash. It, th having having a zealot and a tax collector in your inner circle would would uh, would be like. Um, Inviting, inviting uh, Donald Trump and Nancy Pelosi over for tea, right? It, it just would not have been a, a, a good situation in the natural, but it's, it's amazing how God's grace brought them in to his inner circle, and he loved them unconditionally, uh, regardless of their, of their history, right? And that's the way he loves each of us. But I think what's most important for us to remember. I think all of us on some level accept that, uh, but what we need to be reminded of in our life is that God has called us to do the same, to love others unconditionally the same way that Jesus did. Um, Max Lucada said, God loves you just the way you are. He loves you just the way you are, but he refuses to leave you that way. Isn't that beautiful? He loves you just the way you are, but he refuses to leave you that way. He wants you to be just like Jesus. 
Um, and we all know God demonstrated His love towards us, right? Romans 5, God demonstrated His love towards us while we were yet sinners, while we were like Levi, uh, while, we were, while we were in our own sin, God demonstrated His love to us and sent Jesus to die uh, for us. Um, I, was, I was coming, or I was at PVJ working the, the amazing PVJ booth. Good job on all those who put that together. Honey, you and your team, amazing. Uh, but while I was there, I saw this lady in this, in this shirt uh, two weeks in a row, right? Last week it was the lady in high heels. True story, this true story as well. Um, but she had a shirt on. It was actually a girl that, that was walking in, but she, she had a shirt on and said, I'll love you when you are more like me. Um, which I thought on, at first glance was humorous, but then I started doing some soul searching and I started saying, ouch. Because many times that's sort of the way I approach the world. And uh, it's a funny shirt, but it's a sad reality when we live that out. And I had to confess to myself, wow, how many times am I guilty of my love not being unconditional like Jesus, but being like that shirt? Yeah, I'll love you when you get to be a little more like me. Or I'll get you, love you when you get to be a little more like Carl and can wear ties like this, right? Um, I, I, I'll love you when. Easy for me to put conditions on it. But aren't you thankful that Jesus didn't put conditions on his love towards us? He didn't put conditions on it. He said, I'll take you just the way you are. The mess of your past, uh, all, the, all the brokenness that is there, uh, all the mistakes, just, just bring them all to me. You don't have to clean that stuff up and come to me. Just, just come on to me. I'll take you just the way you are. My challenge to you today is let's, let's serve like Jesus and let's love like Jesus. And let's just go love people for who they are and not who we would hope they could be. God, we love you and we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for this amazing gospel of Mark. I pray over the next many weeks as we dive into this to our CEU time, Lord, that you would uh, help us to learn more about loving and serving the way you did because, Lord, your wonder is truly on full display through the servanthood of Jesus. Let us see that and be inspired by it. We love you and thank you in your name. Amen. Bless you guys.